Okay, so uh, who here has any kind of connection with the north of England, whether you've lived there or uh, worked there or whatever? About three, four people <laughs> to start. <laughs> okay, so uh, that title will probably mean nothing to you. You're thinking, what's that acronym? E Y U P. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a northern greeting, A UP, um, which kind of means hello, how are you? Um, uh, yeah, so my name is Martin Bryant. I'm a community editor at Tech North, which is part of Tech City UK. Uh, we're uh, um, based across the north. Uh, I'm based in Manchester, but we have people all across the north. And uh, our job is uh, essentially uh, promoting and helping to develop the tech sector in the north of England. That's not our official tagline or anything, but uh, when people ask me, that's, that's, that's what, I, uh, what I tell them. Uh, so tonight, um, I thought it'd be good to maybe tell you a bit about what's happening uh, north of London. Um, the north of England, we, we define as kind of bottom of Cheshire up to the Scottish border, uh, roughly. Um, uh, and I think sometimes there are people uh, in London, for example, who aren't really aware that there's much happening in terms of tech uh, outside the southeast, um, or maybe think, oh, well, there's a bit, but you know, it's all happening down here. Actually, there's a lot happening in the north, and it, it's it's growing all the time and it's thriving. And um, yeah, it, it's an interesting uh, interesting place. Um, but uh, before I go into that, I thought I'd just tell you a bit about the kind of things we do to help uh, develop the tech sector in the north. Um, we um, work um, with startups, so we have a couple of programs uh, to support startups. We have something called Founders Network, uh, which uh, helps early stage founders learn all the basics about things like recruitment and uh, raising funding and uh, all that all that essential stuff that uh, an early stage founder needs to learn and they learn from each other uh, both online and uh, at uh, actual meetups so uh, we're relaunching that later in the year we also have uh, northern stars which is a startup competition uh, and uh, there are 10 winners every year we're just uh, going into the third year of it now and uh, the 10 winners we take to conferences around the world and uh, we take them to meet investors and uh, all sorts of good stuff like that and uh, they get really you know real real results out of it it's, it's great to see when we see for example um, uh, a company we take down to TechCrunch Disrupt in London and they walk away with a uh, massive deal with a corporate client from that, or uh, we go to uh, South by Southwest, and one of them meets a, uh, an investor there, um, and so, uh, so so it's great to see the kind of support that we can we can give these companies, um, and uh, yeah, so we're just uh, about to restart that. In terms of investment, um, investment obviously tech investment in London is. Uh, is huge. You've got uh, a massive number of uh, uh, VCs here um, and angels, and it, it's uh, it, it, it's all good. But uh, up north, um, things are still under development in in that uh, uh, in that respect. Um, I, I think a lot of the time, as a result of that, because the uh, investment scene is slightly uh, less uh, developed than it is in London, you see a lot of uh, startups that uh, go revenue far before they think of an investment. And so you get a lot of maybe smaller companies that are actually um, a lot more successful in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of their revenue uh, because they never think to go for the investment. They, they don't go for that or they, they don't know, they don't have access to investors. So they go for revenue first. Uh, and, you create, and that creates a different kind of set of businesses. There are a lot more B2B than there are um, uh, uh, consumer, for example. Uh, but we do want to, um, develop the investment scene in the north. So we have a, uh, a co-investment fund that we're working on, and that's going to uh, uh, help match private investment with uh, public money um, to encourage more private investment. Uh, we're also working to encourage more angels in the north. Um, we uh, have um, an angel development program, which we'll be starting soon, where we'll be uh, training Angel investors, um, maybe they're maybe they're high net worth individuals who have invested in tech uh, in, in other kinds of businesses, but never in tech, or maybe they've just never angel invested, and we'll be uh, uh, telling them how to invest in tech and how to approach entrepreneurs, that kind of thing, and uh, partnering them with more experienced tech investors to to do that, um, and also training up more. Um, seasoned tech angel investors to become lead in, lead angels as well. Um, people and skills. 
uh, like everywhere else in the uh, in the world, really, there's a there's a, uh, a skills shortage in tech in the north. Um, uh, sometimes you talk to people in uh, in the north and elsewhere who uh, you know they think they think that a skills shortage is specific to them, and then you go, well, actually, there's a massive skills so shortage in uh, Silicon Valley, for example. So um, uh, you know everyone's struggling to recruit enough developers, for example. Um, so, but we we do some work specific to the north. Um, uh, whether that's going to Silicon Mount Roundabout in London and saying, have you considered a job up north? Uh, there, there, there's, there's good work up there. Um, or whether it's um, increasing the visibility of uh, women uh, in tech in the north. We uh, recently trained up 28 women with uh, speaker skills for events and media training skills. And uh, they're out and about now um, on conference stages, on TV and radio, uh, increasing the visibility of uh, expert tech uh, industry women, um, which uh, helps encourage more people uh, across the North to get involved in tech. Um, and the other thing we did recently was a, uh, an accelerator for digital skills providers, which um, I think even for some people on the Tech North team was a little bit hard to get their head around. What was an accelerator for digital skills providers? So uh, what that was basically, um, you know, kind of coding schools and the like, We'd work with them to um, uh, over a, over several days to uh, train them with how to scale up their business to serve more people um, and uh, to get more people uh, with the kind of skills that uh, tech companies need. Um, and uh, editorial data and research. Um, this is an area that the, the North has been, uh, and this is kind of close to my heart because my previous job um, uh, 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 as Stephen mentioned, was um, uh, with uh, the Next Web. I was editor in chief and then editor at large, and uh, I was based in Manchester in the north of England. But uh, I covered companies from all around the world, and it always kind of bugged me that I was the only person seeing all these companies in the north. And um, there were lots of tech journalists in London, and they might occasionally come to the north and spend half a day meeting a couple of startups, and then think, "Oh, there's a couple of good startups in the north." When actually, if you spend some time living there and uh, you look around and you actually find out there are loads. Um, so uh, we, if you go to the Tech North website, technorthhq.com, um, we, we've turned it into quite an editorial destination. Uh, we write about a lot, we write all the profiles of tech companies, uh, talk about the issues affecting tech companies in the north, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, we also do all the data uh, and research. We uh, have a, a quarterly investment index that looks at how investment is uh, trending in the north. Um, we uh, look at uh, skills provision across the north, all that kind of thing to help us um, help us understand what we need to do, but also help everyone understand exactly what the issues are in the north, what the strengths, what the weaknesses are. Um, so uh, I think that's enough of uh, me talking about what we do, but it maybe helps set the scene uh, for the north of England. Um, a couple of misconceptions about the north, when I sometimes talk to people uh, in, in London particularly, um, one of them is that there are no jobs, and um, you know all the tech jobs are in London. Um, this is just one data point I, uh, I picked out of um, uh, the, it was actually um, uh, some Tech City UK research last year, but um, if you look at uh, um, the average uh, uh, digital salary for 2016, uh, London, unsurprisingly, is top um, 62K. Um, and then we've got Reading, Edinburgh, we've got um, Newcastle, Leeds, and Manchester um, all in the top 10 there um, uh, with, uh, with perfectly respectable um, and very good um, average salaries there. Um, and uh, that might see, you might still think, well, I can earn so much more in London. But the cost of living is so much higher. The quality of life uh, may be arguably lower in London. So what we're finding is there are people saying, actually, I might earn a lower salary figure on paper in the north, but actually, there's a lot of uh, opportunities for me in the north, and my money goes a lot further. I can buy a house in the north. Um, uh, who do, who think that about themselves? So, uh, and some of our team have actually relocated from London to the north, and they're like, I can buy a house. It's amazing. Um, so, uh, so yeah. And uh, in terms of jobs. Lots of jobs. Um, in, in Manchester alone, 
Um, I can think, you know, the BBC recently announced hi uh, they're hiring 200 more tech roles, um, uh, working on uh, all, you know, iPlayer and all the good stuff they do um, up in Salford. Um, we have um, Sky doing similar work in Leeds. We have uh, um, Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's, right, th they hire lots of de developers, maybe surprisingly, but uh, they were advertising on the sides of trams in Manchester for developers. You know, <laughs> last year, it was like, we're hiring 300 developers um, on the side of a tram. It was, a, a, it was quite a sight to see and shows how far things have come in quite a small amount of time. I remember just a few years ago, I was uh, um, talking to some people in London and they were saying, yeah, Manchester's just an agency town, there are a few digital agencies, there's nothing much else. But now uh, you've got these massive companies crying out for, 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 for developers. And it's not just um, big companies. Um, uh, no startups or up startups. This is actually massively um, underestimating what there is. This is a tiny little screenshot. It's, it's a tiny low res screenshot that I've blown up, which is why it's slightly uh, pixelated. But um, uh, this is from um, some research GP Bullhound uh, did the, uh, the tech focused investment bank, uh, GP Bullhound. Um, they have an office in Manchester. Um, uh, their, one of their founding partners is actually from uh, Manchester originally and uh, wanted to relocate back to the north. So he set up an office in Manchester and it's doing really well there. But one thing he wanted to do was um, a northern tech map. And uh, so they started measuring the, the kind of digital businesses in, in the north of England. And that's, th they are the numbers they came up with. It's actually a lot larger than that. And uh, you know, if you've ever tried to map startups, it's very hard because they, they come and go over time uh, very quickly. Sometimes you know, uh, you, you'll have 10 startups in an area, then you have 20, then you have 15, then you have 30. So uh, it's hard to map them. But uh, that's just, you know, as I say, that's a conservative data point. But uh, there are startups all over the north. It's insane. Like, and, and not just in the places you expect, like you know, the big cities, Manchester, Leeds, um, Newcastle, etc. Um, I go out to tidy towns and villages and you have like uh, you'll meet a, a company in a village in cheshire who have a massive games company that's uh, you know making loads of money on the app store or you go to burnley and the company that makes mixing desks for hollywood studios uh, is based there and they've got a picture of snoop dogg on the wall um uh, wearing a burnley football shirt um so it's because uh, he bought one of their um, mixing desks. So, uh, and they, yeah, Paul McCartney gave them one of the reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorders that he recorded Revolver on um, uh, in 1966. It's an amazing pla uh, place to visit. So, um, yeah, uh, there's so much going on in the north. Um, boomerangs. Um, is something we did earlier this year. Uh, this was, we, we, we interviewed a few people who were from the north moved to London for, to start their careers, to, to learn a lot about, you know, to get, because they thought, either they thought, I can't get as good a job in the North, or that's where they thought they had to go, or whatever. Uh, and so they, they moved to London, and now they've moved back, so they've boom, boomeranged back to the North. And we talked to them about some of their experiences and why they thought, you know, they had to come back and why they went down in the first place. And um, interviewed some really interesting people. Uh, um, a, a woman from um, uh, Newcastle, or near Newcastle, who uh, moved to London, uh, started a career, started getting pangs for the North again. She started feeling, I want to go home. You know, I, I prefer the North. Uh, and she, she, she ended, ended up working in music playlist curation uh, for Warner Music in Newcastle. Um, so you know, that's just one, one example of you know, all the good, interesting, creative jobs aren't in London. They're all over the place. Um, uh, and one guy who... Um, uh,